वक्ताराम सर एम एम डी पीडियाट्रिक्स फ्रॉम लोकनायक हॉस्पिटल न्यू दिल्ली आज के कार्यक्रम को कोऑर्डिनेट कर रहे हैं श्री जी गणेश शंकर सर आज के और आज के इस वेबिनार में पेट्रोल्स की भूमिका निभा रहे हैं रेस्पेक्टेड मीना कुमारी शर्मा मैम डायरेक्टर आईपीएस न्यू दिल्ली रेस्पेक्टेड रमेश कुमार पांडे सर डियर पार्टिसिपेंट जैसा कि हम जानते हैं सेरेब्रल पालसी एक न्यूरो डेवलपमेंट डिसऑर्डर है जिसका प्रिविलेंस इंडिया में एक हजार लोगों में से तीन लोगों में पाई जाती है जो कि पंद्रह से बीस परसेंट टोटल फिजिकल डिसेबिलिटी में कंट्रीब्यूट करता है इसलिए सेरेब्रल पालसी का अर्ली डायग्नोसिस और अर्ली इंटरवेंशन एक बहुत ही जरूरी होता है अर्ली इंटरवेंशन से हम होने वाली फंक्शनल लिमिटेशन को कम कर सकते हैं और इसी को ध्यान में रखते हुए सियासी लखनऊ अर्ली इंटरवेंशन की अपनी सर्विसेज प्रोवाइड करता है अब मैं हमारे रिसोर्स पर्सन डॉक्टर वक्ताराम सर को इनवाइट करना चाहूंगा डॉक्टर वक्ताराम सर Good evening, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible. So, good evening, everyone. As the uh, Prakashan has already done uh, my introduction and uh, uh, briefly describe about the disease also. Yeah, uh, then the basically I will explain the. basic definition and the investigation and management part uh, definition of the cerebral palsy is a uh, it is a group of disorder uh, of the development of the movement uh, posture and which is causing the act activity limitation and that are attributed by the non progressive disorder basically it is a non progressive static disorder that occurred in the developing uh, the fetal brain and sometimes it is in uh, uh, neonates the motor dis uh, disorder of cerebral palsy are often accompanied with the disturbance of the sensory cognition and the communication as well as perception behavior and sometimes associated with seizure or not the classification the physiological classification the spastic cp the dyskinetic uh, choreoarthritic ataxic and the mixed kind of cp uh, anatomical uh, quadriplegic which is involving all the four limbs Uh, diplegic which usually involve bil uh, bilateral lower limbs uh, hemiplegic it can uh, it is involving one side of the body whether a arm or then involve both arm and leg triplegic involve three limbs and monoplegic only involve one limb uh, prevalence uh, according to surveillance of the cerebral palsy in the european collaboration it is around 1.5 to 3% in uh, 1000 alive births according to the australian cerebral palsy registry it is 2.1 per 1000 live births and as per autism and development disability monitoring network usa it is 1 per 1 1000 live births uh the prevalence according to the type of the cp spastic cp which is most common according to acpr dyskinetic is around 5.9% ataxia is 5.5 and the mix is 8.4% prevalence of type of cp uh, worldwide is spastic cp is uh, spastic diplegia is most common and in india it is spastic quadriplegia is most common is because the spastic uh, quadriplegia is usually because of low birth weight and the extreme preterm uh, risk factor for the uh, cerebral palsy uh, prenatal factors are the the prenatal antenatal bleeding uh, eclampsia uh, infection like chorionitis or the uti or internal uh, torch infections it can be caused with the multiple pregnancies and the drug effects uh, perinatal it is birth asphyxia it is due to the prematurity uh, post maturity which leads to usually uh, meconium aspiration and the birth asphyxia which leads to the birth asphyxia low birth weight uh, breached delivery which would due to the difficult birth forceps or assisted delivery with the forceps of the vacuum delivery prolonged labor or precipitated labors postnatal because of jaundice the bind 
uh, sometimes there is an infection meningitis and uh, some ic bleeds uh, comorbidity associated with the uh, cere cerebral palsy or the seizure visual impairment intell intellectual impairment learning disabilities hearing problems uh, communication dysarthria feeding problems oromotor dysfunction speech and teeth issues uh, respiratory dysfunction due to recurrent uh, uh, infections aspiration or the deformities bladder and bowel involvement and there is also social and emotional disturbance for the child as well as family uh, the percentage of the comorbidities the most common is speech uh, intellectual impairment and the, which is around 59% speech and the 57% intellectual uh, impairment vision is 41% and the uh, seizure you will observe with the half of the 30 to 40% of the patient having seizure uh in seizure the most almost 40% of the children identified the cp by the addm cp network 2008 uh in the india it is around one third of the cp patient are having uh, seizure which is and the mean age of onset of seizure was 18.9 months around 19 months and general uh, which are the before the one year of uh, onset is usually one, one uh, before the one year of age and uh, generalized seizure are most common it can also can be associated with the partial seizure infantile spasm or the myoclonic seizures oromotor dysfunction wise they cause feeding problems droolings Uh, the difficult in sucking swallowing chewing and uh, also inability to eat result in the failure to the the uh, difficulty in the sucking swallowing and chewing which lead to the uh, failure to thrive delayed growth malnutrition which lead to uh, lead to the recurrent infections hearing uh, hearing problem uh, the most common high risk uh, babies are the which are the preterm which is associated with the bind and all baby who are having uh, any cns insult which should be uh, tested for the hearing loss uh, hearing losses with the, the screening is oae or the vera bladder bowel involvement uh, it is because of loss of coordination of the bladder and bowel inspectors can cause enuresis uh, can cause uh, retention of the urine which lead to the urinary tract infection it can cause constipation which is most commonly associated uh, causes again neurogenic bladder poor cognition decreased mobility and poor communication visual impairment most commonly due to the uh, damage of visual cortex cortical blindness due to the uh, damage of the bl optic nerve which is you know, bl complete blindness with loss of ocular motor control binocular vision loss and there are also refraction errors uh, in a speech and the language the child has difficulty in uh, producing sound and uh, articulating words uh, usually causes are the respiratory difficulty to the respiratory muscle involvement uh, phonation difficulty to the laryngeal involvement due to increased tone articulation uh, difficulty to the oromotor dysfunctions in the assessment uh, we'll go through the detailed history starting from the antenatal respect like infections which is choriomyelitis uti uh, antenatal bleed uh, antenatal hypertension perinatal birth asphyxia uh, the infections or difficult birth in the uh, postnatal period immediate new uh, newborn period is encephalopathy or infection and in the development of the uh, symptoms is like tone changes a motor delay there are deficit which is uh, in achieving the uh, various motor milestone as in examination part uh, first we have to look for the general examination that is anthropometry these are most of the children are uh, having the microcephaly short stature failure to thrive and most of child also having the dysmorphic faces and with uh, associated with the neurocutaneous cystic motor nutrition deficiency because of the malnutrition detailed cns examination 
skeletal examination for the skeletal deformity with uh, contractures. In the CNS examination, uh, the behavior, behavior, attention span, memory, speech, and intelligence. All the cranial nerves should be examined. In a motor, motor system examination, you should examine the bulk, tone, power, uh, all the uh, deep tendon reflexes, superficial reflexes, uh, gait, involvement of uh, uh, in, involuntary movements, and the postures. Bulk, which is usually decreased because of decreased mortality, malnutrition, and disuse atrophies. Uh, Increase sometimes in the spastic muscle due to the uh, the spastic muscles are usually the muscle mass is increased, especially in the calf muscles. Tone in the spastic there is hypertonia, also in dystonia, uh, in dystonia is also hypertonia, and sometimes it is hypertonic kidney. There are the normal uh, angle to. Uh, to look for the tone, the popliteal angle, which is uh, uh, range is given for the normal is scarp sign. Uh, the tone scales, which is we are using, is a modified S word scale, which is in the uh, in the grid zero is there is no increase in any muscle tone. One is slightly increase at the usually at the minimum at the uh, resistance at the end of the range. In the two, the, uh, as usual as a one, but usually the minimal resistance throughout the range of the movement. In the grade three, more marked increase range in the tone of the tone throughout the movement. Fourth is considerable increase in tone with passive movement also, first passive movement is also difficult. And the fifth is whole affected part is rigid. Uh, these are the common uh, type of gait. Which is used in the CP uh, in the CP patient, which is a uh, waddling gait, bunny hop, uh, crawl, commando crawl, hemiplegic gait, the toe walk, toe walking in the spastic. Uh, developmental examination. The initially the developmental assessment. The the, the infant we can follow uh, in supine position. You see the ATNRS, neck and shoulder retractions in the ventral sense and the position of head, head and uh, limbs, in the prone, the head lift and the pelvic and trunk. Uh, we can use pull to sit with in the, there is a head leg and axillary suspension for the limbs. These are the primitive reflexes, the normal appearance and the uh, disappearance. The, for the routing, it is appear at the 28 week and lasting for the three months. Routing, suckling and more almost disappear at around three months. And uh, placing is appear at birth and the remain the, throughout the uh, life. Uh, stepping it appear at uh, at birth and the persist as two months of age. ATRNS and STR STNRS appear in the 30, uh, 30, uh, 37th week and persist five to six months. These are the normal uh, moral stepping and the placing reflex. ATNR, STNR, and the Labyrinth and reflex. In the muscular skeletal system, uh, the asymmetry of the limb length because of the contractures. Uh, the spine should be examined, the hips should be examined. In the spine assessment, the spinal deformity. That is because of postural prolonged because of prolonged uh, uh, this mobility or uh, structural that is scoliosis, hyperkyphosis, and the hyperlordosis. Uh, in which the in the kyphosis the patient is not able to sit, so there is lacking the sitting balance. In the lumbar hyperlordosis, it can occur in the CP patient, which is ambulatory. And lumbar kyphosis, patient with the hamstring contractures. Uh, hip assessment. Uh, in hip assessment, we'll uh, measure the active and the passive uh, range of motion. 
which check for the flexor as well as contract uh, adduction uh, contractors we will measure the limb length uh, so look for the asymmetry in the limb length to measure the actual lower limb length from the anterior isis to the medial malleolus and measure the pro trochanter to the knee joint line and from there to medial malleolus if the knee flexion contract is present so finally how we will diagnose the cp first we have to see the abnormal motor development if it is there it is we can say a uh, 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 cp otherwise non cp in the if the abnormal motor one present then activity limitation and the uh, cause central of origin which is risk factor with motor examination when you are imaging if it is progressive then it is, then it is not cp there are lot of other cause of abnormal motor development and if it is non progressive so it is cp then in initial in definition we have said the abnormal motor development which is non progressive a uh, differential diagnosis other than cp there are neurological disorder which is like hereditary neurodegenerative disease uh, in the neurodegenerative disease usually there is regression of the acute uh, acute milestones that in red syndrome there is structural the tethered spinal cord the as present in the lower limbs facility with the deficient uh, bowel and bladder dysfunction due to the spinal involvement there is disorder of the uh, muscle weakness the hypotonia disorder ataxia usually the ataxia telangiectasia or metabolic disorder like neiman pick disease or sometimes there is bulbar and oromotor dysfunctions in the neurological diseases the metabolic disorder also present as a uh, uh, developmental delay with uh, motor dystone and uh, motor developmental uh, delay that is glutaric acid acidemia type 1 urea cycle disorders which is usually associated with the hypotonia there is endocrine disorder like thyroid dysfunction which is generalized hypotonia in investigation management of the cp aim of the investigation to diagnose the case to confirm the uh, the origin of the uh, uh the central origin so in which well first we'll rule out the dif other differential diagnosis that is neurology disorder metabolic and uh, then for the prognosis purpose and also assessment of the comorbidity neuroimaging uh, in the the mix cp the 100% of mri is abnormal as uh, where the 80% of ct are abnormal in the in the mri the quadriplegic cp the 90% mri abnormal hemiplegic 96% uh, diplegic 94 and ataxic 75% and usually we prefer prefer the mri over the ct because the sensitivity is high this is mri showing the multi cystic encephalomalacia and this is uh, this mri showing the periventricular leukomalacia in the image b and with the arrow mark this is hemiplegic cp which is showing the uh, focal area of the infarct in the post connectors bilateral hypertension lesion seen in the uh, globus pallidus the white arrow mark you can see here there is a basal ganglia lesions usually in the uh, patient develop the cerebral palsy due to the bind in the uh, comorbidity the first is seizure which is diagnosed with the eeg uh, we have to de obtain detailed history examination and rule out the other causes cognition for the we will do the developmental question with intelligent um, like you also With the BASI two, BASI D three, and MIS SIC, a BKT scale. In the region, most common is squint, strabismus, and which is ninety percent, and 
Refractive error, refractive error also 70, 75%. There may be the visual defects around 60% and the cerebral visual impairment around 60 to 70%. And for the visual, the every patient who's having the any CNS insult, it is perinatal asphyxia or the meningitis or any CNS bleed should be examined with the uh, visual visually above the potential VEP. A hearing uh, clinically in initially in the early infancy, how we'll diagnose is around zero to four months of age. We'll Asking the history is a startup, or in the four to five months, we'll uh, with the rattle bell which dial will turn around the uh, on the side of the uh, sound. And for the screening, we'll do the OAE. Uh, BERA and ASSR auditory steady state response. So we'll for the early screening we'll use only OA or the BERA. Other com comorbidity are gastroesophageal reflexes. Investigation is uh, adenoclead uh, GR scan, a video fluoroscopy, contrast, uh, a swallow study. Then next is the osteopenia. We we'll do the DEXA scan. For the joint dislocation and deformities, the ultrasound is sufficient, uh, X-ray is sufficient enough. And uh, for the sleeve related disorder, polysomnography. And the management wise, the goals of the management uh, to normalize the movement of movement and the posture of the child. So to normalize the tone, to achieve the uh, as normal milestone as can be, to prevent the contracture and to correct the postures. Second, to facilitate the activity of the daily living, like feeding, like dressing, bathing, a play, or schooling or occupation if possible. Uh, management of other comorbidity, family counseling and support. These are the goals. So uh, the management of the CP patient is the multidisciplinary approach. So, Will you, uh, there's a team of the psychologist, social worker, pediatrician, occupational therapist, uh, physiotherapist, the orthopedician, and uh, prosthetic ortho uh, technician, ophthalmologist, ENT surgeon, and a speech and language therapist. So here, the role of the pediatrician is to make the correct diagnosis, to uh, determine the cause of the cell palsy and uh, the extent and the severity of the, the neuromuscular deficit associated problems and pl the plan the management according to the, the comor uh, associated comorbidity and the drug related management and to, and then later on the follow up and the modification of management as per requirement like the patient with the seizure so we'll manage the seizure and uh, control the seizure and drug management of the dystonias and the patient having the constipation will manage the, with the uh, lactulose. The motivation and assurance of the parents explain the prognosis, coordination with the other team member. The Treatment modality which is available for the CP patient are the medication to uh, control the seizure, decrease the uh, tone, and the decrease the spasticity, and for the constipation all, then bracing, the surgery for the contractors, occupation therapist for the speech, language, and uh, rest of the part, physiotherapist for the, the motor related management. Other, uh, and also the management of the other associated problems. Uh, the physiotherapy and occupational therapy management. And uh, this is the positioning, stretching, strengthening of the, the muscles, the neurodevelopmental therapy, the constant induced movement therapy, and the hand-arm bilateral therapy. 
ஹைட்ரோதெரப்பி ஹிப்போதெரப்பி பிளே தெரப்பி மியூசிக் அண்ட் பாடி வேட் சப்போர்ட்டட் ட்ரீட்மெண்ட் ட்ரைனிங் திஸ் இஸ் ஆஸ்ட்ரோசிஸ் இன் விச் தியரப்பிங் த ஹிப் அப்டக்ஷன் பிரேசிஸ் ஸ்பைனல் பிரேசிஸ் தெர் ஆர் ஹேண்ட் ஸ்பிளிண்ட்ஸ் கேஃபோ அண்ட் ஏஃபோஸ் ஃபார்மக்கோலாஜிக்கல் the drug which you we use the diazepam doses 1 to 10 mg per kg per 3 divided doses baclofen for the dystonia doses 1.25 to 2.5 mg per uh, mg bd and adjust according to the uh, as a requirement uh, baclofen and then the botulinum the botox it is used in a less than 20 unit per kg the mechanism action is usually block the presynaptic uh, neuro excitatory uh, uh, neurotransmitters and release the tone so it is advantage is muscle relaxant bind selectively and it is because it is using local so it causes local pain local irritation and sometimes it is causes respiratory muscle failure the serial casting serial casting may be the serve to reduce the spasticity in the muscle by decreasing the stunning of the abnormal or uh, strong tonic foot reflexes serial casting in the uh, cerebral palsy population has been uh, shown the improvement in the range of movement of that muscle the casting uh, provide the stability and the prolonged strengthening of uh, stretch of the muscle which is immobilized in the lendon position at least six or of the prolonged stretches needed for the effectiveness of the serial casting so the botulinum with the serial casting is uh, more effective so we use use the botox which is reduce the spasticity and improve the ambulatory status when we use a combination with the serial casting obviously for the help in maintain and the improve the muscle length and the also passive range of movement so without conservative intervention such as serial casting with or without a botox injection are more expensive orthopedic surgical intervention for the indication for the orthopedic surgery are there is no further improvement despite of the the physiotherapies or usual uh, if they present first time for the treatment in more than 5 year if it is severe spasticity if the contractor already developed or uh, development of uh, torsional deformities or if there is dislocation of joint routine orthopedic surgery and uh, which is complete section of tendon tendon transfer so in which the usually the patient is not able to balance muscle power of the antagonist sometime patient sometimes patient that det- deteriorated with the resist surgery the other selective spastic control surgery ossscs the selective lengthening of the biarticular muscle and the sparing of the monoarticular muscle tendon transfer not done uh, usually patient do not deter- uh, there is no deterioration and is used in early intervention before the 5 year a neurosurgical procedure the selective rhizotomy is involved the selective resection of the posterior nerve root from l2 to s2 and this may be the help for the children with the severe lower limb spasticity with sufficient with the there is sufficient trunk control to set and then and uh, some form of forward uh, locomotion disadvantage if we will cut the uh, the nerve root nerve root it can be the sensory disturbances there may be the bladder bowel bladder dysfunction bowel dysfunction scoliosis maybe the lordosis and the hip dislocation and foot deformities the loss of anti gravity muscle stability worsening of motor function while already there is rhizotomy so and the 
the patient would already develop the contract there is no effect on that patient and if it is upper limb uh, upper limb involvement common deformity and the uh, management <clears throat> the common the shoulder internal rotation contracture for the treatment is shoulder the rotational osteotomy or the subcapsularis and pectoris lengthening elbow flexion deformity and the biceps and brachialis lengthening and brachioradialis origin release in the forearm pronation the pronator tear is release uh, in the wrist flexion deformity the uh, flexor release or wrist ortho arthro arthro disease and thumb and palm deformity is there, there is flexion adduction the release of adductor uh, pollicis uh, transfer of tendons and the stabilization of the uh, metacarpophalangeal joint yeah. in this piece in the picture we will see the uh, scoliosis so the treatment is surgery which is spine fusion Uh, hip deformities. They have their abductor uh, abductor spasm, spasm in which the treatment is initially the manage, uh, conservative management is physiotherapy to pharmacological management, which is to uh, botulinum, the use of botulinum. We can then the surgical the abductor uh, tenotomies, obturator and neurotic neurectomy, uh, blocking the nerve by phenol. Two to three percent of phenol. Uh, in the hip subluxation, the prevented by the positioning and the reassembly with the surgery. Internal rotation that is shortening of the medial ham hamstring. Uh, in the management is tenotomy of the semi tendinous. Uh, knee deformities, the flexion deformity with initially the physiotherapy. Pharmacological management and surgically uh, lengthening of the hamstrings. Uh, general recurmatum uh, <clears throat> treatment is rectus femoris lengthening or the transfer, uh, gastrocnemius lengthening or the correcting of pes sequinus. The step knee rectus femoris lengthening or the tendon transfer. Uh, the foot deformity it was back. Equinus treatment is physiotherapy, uh, pharmacological management, and surgically there is lengthening of the gastrocnemius or achilles tendon. In the whereas, when physiotherapy and pharmacological management with surgery is tibial is <coughs> lengthening of tibial posterior, posterior and uh, lengthening of achilles tendon. Uh, the achilles tendon we can do the split uh, tibial anterior muscle transfer, calcaneus osteotomy, and the last is. Uh, Triple arthrodesis. For the other associated problems like uh, gastrointestinal man, uh, problem like GRD, so the medical management with uh, anti GR uh, measures like uh, Lenjol, or we can use Dizin, uh, uh, the posturing had an uh, elevation uh, with the and the surgical is a fundoplication. For the constipation, you have to increase the fluid intake, increase the fiber intake, laxative. Uh, if it is severe constipation, then we can use suppository or enemas, or sometimes abdominal massage itself work. For the drooling, orometer exercises to decrease the drooling, we can use glycopyrrolate, botulinum. Or the surgery in the sublingual and submandibular gland excision or submandibular gland uh, uh, gland duct ligation or parotid duct ligation. For the pain management, we will use analgesics. For the seizure, anticonvulsant, osteopenia, for the weight bearing exercise and the supplements. In the malnutrition, <coughs> we have to increase the uh, the nutrition with an, uh, calorie and energy dense feeds. 
the feeding problem special uh, set device we can use with the angled spoon or two handle cup two handle cup for the pulmonary or the recurrent chest infection which is mostly due to the uh, due to the respiration pneumonia so the chest physiotherapy use of antibiotic to uh, treat the acute infection and uh, the correct correction of the grd as well as prevention of grd it may be the behavioral problems so in individual ways the visual impairment uh, in the visual difficulty uh, is individual visual difficulty and the treatment for the refractive error use the glasses of the contact lens establishments the corrective glasses or surgery and myopia same cortical blindness enhance the use of other senses of to de uh, detect for the cataract you have to do the surgery only. hearing if it is sensory neural hearing loss hearing aids of the uh, cochlear implants with conductive hearing loss because of the fluid in the uh, middle ear cavity you can use antibiotic to treat the uh, acute condition with the decongestion or if it is person we can use myringotomy for the speak and the language uh, for oral motor function using strengthening and intraoral uh, stimulation for the uh, verbal and the non verbal communication for the verbal we can use prompt and the, for the non verbal this aac aa aac auditory stimulation so it is थैंक यू सर मैं सभी पार्ट, जुड़े हुए पार्टिसिपेंट से निवेदन करना चाहूंगा कि आपके जो भी कुछ क्वेश्चन है आप चैट बॉक्स में और वैसे भी आप वर्बली भी पूछ सकते हैं इससे पहले सर हमारे पास कुछ क्वेश्चन आए हैं पार्टिसिपेंट से वो मैं आपसे पूछना चाहूंगा सर एक क्वेश्चन है कि जब बच्चे को सीजर्स आते हैं तो उनके लिए क्या मेडिकेशन देते हैं नॉर्मली Sir, can you hear me? Ha ha. Ha sir. So, our first sir, first question is that when the child has seizures, CP's child, then what should the medication normally be given? If seizures come, first of all, if seizures are there, then we have to take them immediately to the hospital. और हम सीजर अबाउट सीजर को स्टॉप करेंगे विद द मेडाजोलम इंजेक्शन एंड देन फॉर द कंट्रोल हम लोग फेनिटोइन ओरल फेनिटोइन इन द सिरप फॉर्म जब जिन बच्चों में इंटेक की प्रॉब्लम्स है लाइक फीडिंग इश्यूज है उनमें हम सिरप यूज करते हैं और इन स्मॉल चिल्ड्रन लेस देन 5 इयर्स हम लोग सिरप यूज करेंगे और उससे बड़े में वी कैन यूज फेनिटोइन टैबलेट और We can use दूसरा वॉलपेट होता है वो भी हम यूज कर सकते हैं और एक लेबरासीटाम जो तीन प्राइमरी ड्रग्स हैं उनको यूज करते हैं ओके सर और सर जब बच्चे को फ्रिक्वेंटली सीजर्स आते हैं तो क्या क्या हम थेरेपी कंटिन्यू रख सकते हैं या नहीं फिजियोथेरेपी यस सर अगर फ्रिक्वेंट सीजर अगर फ्रिक्वेंट सीजर है तो जब तक सीजर आ रहे हैं तो पेशेंट को हॉस्पिटलाइज ही रहना चाहिए बिकॉज हर सीजर के बाद में पेशेंट कैन एस्पिरेट एस्पिरेट होके और उसका निमोनिया होना और उस टाइम में सडन रेस्पिरेटरी अरेस्ट हो सकता है कार्डेक और ऑब्वियसली चाइल्ड कैन डाई सो जब तक कंटिन्यूस सीजर आ रहे हैं हमें उसको हॉस्पिटल में ही रखना होता है सीजर कंट्रोल के बाद में uh, एक फिक्स डेज के बाद में ही हमें करना होता है फिजियोथेरेपी के लिए लाना होता है पेशेंट और सर ड्यूरिंग द सीजर उसको क्या पोजिशनिंग में या क्या होम मैनेजमेंट जब तक हॉस्पिटलाइज हॉस्पिटल में लेके जाएंगे तब तक कौन सी पोजीशन में या कैसे रखेंगे उसके बारे में थोड़ा बता दीजिए हाँ जिन बच्चों को बहुत फ्रिक्वेंट सीजर आते हैं उनको हम पोजीशनिंग वाइज लेफ्ट लेटरल पोजीशन जो लेफ्ट साइड होता है उसको नीचे रखना राइट को ऊपर करना लेफ्ट साइड में टर्न कर देना है बच्चे को दूसरा अभी इंजेक्शन स्प्रे आते नेजर स्प्रे आते हैं मेडा चलाम के अगर वो सीजर बहुत ज्यादा लॉन्ग लास्टिंग है पांच मिनट से ज्यादा हो गया तो हम नेजर स्प्रे आता है उसको भी दे सकते हैं ताकि वो 
उस टाइम के लिए सीजर रुक जाए उसके बाद में बच्चे को तत्काल हॉस्पिटल लाना होता ताकि हम इंजेक्शन से ड्रग के रोज बढ़ा देते तो दो, दो का लेवल भी देखते कि मेंटेन हो रहा है कि नहीं हो रहा है ओके सर अगला क्वेश्चन आया है सर कि स्पासिटी मैनेजमेंट के लिए हम नॉर्मली कौन सी कॉमन ड्रग यूज करते हैं सर स्पास्टिक अगर ड्रग बोटोलिनम यूज करते हैं बोटोलिनम टॉक्सिन यूज करते हैं जो मसल के जो टोन है उसको रिलैक्स करेगा इंट्रामस्कुलर इंजेक्शन होता है और अगर इसको हम फिजियोथेरेपी और सीरियल कास्टिंग के साथ यूज करते हैं तो मैंने जैसे बताया कि ज्यादा इफेक्टिव होती है एज अगर अलोन थेरेपी ओके सर सर और जैसे बैक्लोपेन के साइड इफेक्ट क्या होते हैं सर बेक्लोफिन के साइड इफेक्ट यूजुअली जो टोन होती है उसको मतलब बेसिकली डिस्टोनिक जो सीपी होते हैं उनमें यूज करते हैं ठीक है समटाइम जो आ, जो फीवर रिलेटेड इश्यूज होते हैं उनके साथ में हम उसको यूज नहीं करते हैं टेम्परेचर इश्यूज क्रिएट करती है ठीक है हम यूज नहीं करेंगे हम तो फीवर कैन कॉल फीवर ओके सर सर नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन ये है कि हमारे पास जो थेरेपी के लिए बच्चे आते हैं वो एक टाइम के बाद आके उनकी मेडिकेशन जो जो इस फैसिलिटी के लिए मेडिकेशन रहता है वो बंद कर देते हैं तो क्या सर ऐसे बंद करना चाहिए या कंटिन्यूस रहना चाहिए अगर अगर स्पास्टिक सीपी है तो अगर हम इसको यूजुअली कंटिन्यू करना होता है अगर हम बाकी मॉडल फिजियोथेरेपी से हमने टोन को स्टेबलाइज कर दिया है ठीक है अगर इफ स्टाइल इज वॉकिंग नॉर्मली तो देन वी कैन डिग्री अदरवाइज जब तक स्पेसिटी है वे टू सीरियली असेसमेंट होगा एंड कंटिन्यू करना होता है और अगर जब तक रिलीज है तो हम डोज इंक्रीज भी कर सकते हैं वंस अगर नॉर्मल हो जाता है दैट इज लेस लाइकली बिकॉज द जो कॉज है वो ऑलरेडी स्टेब्लिश हो चुका है तो जब तक स्पेसिटी रहेगी तब तक कंटिन्यू करना अगर हम फिजियोथेरेपी से अटेन कर लेते हैं तो देन वी कैन स्टॉप बट वी हैव टू असेस ओके सर मेडिकेशन सर एंटीस्पासिटी के लिए और बैक्लोफेन पंप का मतलब सर क्या इंडिकेशन है बैक्लोफेन पंप कब यूज करते हैं हम यूज करते हैं ओके सर और सर हम राइजोटोमी के लिए कब जा सकते हैं सर कितनी स्पासिटी जब रहे तब कम राइजोटोमी के लिए जा सकते हैं इसके लिए सर आप इंडिकेशन के बारे में थोड़ा बता दें राइजोटोमी यूजुअली हम वी डू नॉट प्रिफर हम लोग नया सेटअप हम लोग प्रिफर नहीं करते हैं और हमारे सेटअप में यूजुअली नहीं होता है बट बहुत सीवियर स्पासिटी है विच इज कॉजिंग मतलब पेन ठीक है एंड अर्ली डिफॉर्मिटीज अर्ली इंडिकेशन एक्सप्लेन किए थे अर्ली डिफॉर्मिटीज होती है तो कॉन्ट्रेक्चर अर्ली डेवलप होने या फिर एज ऑलरेड फाइव ईयर जो मैंने एक्सप्लेन किया था तो मैम प्रिफर करेंगे यूजली जो एसोसिएट कॉम्प्लिकेशन होते हैं वो ज्यादा होते हैं लाइक अब अगर मोटर का ट्रेट सेंसरी जो है वो शिमला चला जाएगा फिर ब्लेडर बावल इन्वॉल्वमेंट हो सकता है जो मोटर हम कट करें तो इम्प्रूवमेंट की पॉसिबिलिटी डिक्रीज जाती है और द गेनिंग द पावर अगेन दोबारा का जो पावर है वो उसमें इशूज रहेंगे ओके सर सर और एक लास्ट क्वेश्चन है कि सर करेक्टिव सर्जरी इसके लिए क्या इंडिकेशन रहेगी हम कब करेक्टिव सर्जरी के लिए एडवाइस कर सकते हैं और कब उसके लिए जा सकते हैं ये मैंने पहले बताया है यूजुअली जब हमारा जो कंजर्वेटिव मैनेजमेंट है लाइक फिजियोथेरेपी है या ड्रग मैनेजमेंट है अगर इन सबसे अगर नहीं ठीक होता है या फिर कॉन्ट्रेक्टर ऑलरेडी स्टेब्लिश हो चुका होता है या जो पेशेंट वो लेट प्रेजेंट करता है इन सब चीजों में हम लोग करेक्टिव सर्जरी जाते हैं या फिर जैसे जॉइंट में जॉइंट डिस्क लोकेशन हो गया है कुछ सब लेक्सेशन है उन सब केसेस में हम करेक्टिव सर्जरी लेते हैं बेसिकली सर जो नेगलेटेड केसेस है उनमें करेक्टिव सर्जरी के लिए जाते हैं हाँ जैसे हमारे हॉस्पिटल में कई बार हम लोग टेन ईयर्स इलेवन ईयर्स के पेशेंट फर्स्ट टाइम प्रेजेंट करते हैं ओके सर उन लोगों सब में कॉन्ट्रेक्ट स्टेब्लिश कॉन्ट्रेक्टर होते हैं हम लोगों को करेक्टिव सर्जरी करने पड़ते हैं ओके सर थैंक यू सर अब मैं करुणा सैनी मैम को इनवाइट करना चाहता हूँ वोट ऑफ थैंक्स के लिए थैंक यू प्रकाश संजू सर
सबसे पहले मैं डॉक्टर वक्ता राम सर का थैंक यू कहना चाहूंगी कि आपने आप इतना वेल्यूबल टाइम हम हमारे लिए निकाला और साथ ही आपने इतनी वेल्यूबल इन्फॉर्मेशन आपने हमारे लिए और हमारे सारे पेरेंट्स और प्रोफेशनल्स के साथ शेयर की समस्त सियासी टीम की तरफ से मैं आपका थैंक यू कहना चाहूंगी साथ ही मैं थैंक यू कहना चाहूंगी हमारे पेट्रॉन्स का मीना कुमारी शर्मा मैम डायरेक्टर पी डी यू एन आई पी एच साथ ही मैं थैंक यू कहना चाहूंगी रमेश कुमार पांडे सर का डायरेक्टर सियासी लखनऊ इसी के साथ मैं अपने कोऑर्डिनेटर कोऑर्डिनेटिंग टीम मेंबर्स का तह दिल से शुक्रिया अदा करना चाहूंगी जी शंकर गणेश सर लेक्चरर फिजियोथेरापिस्ट प्रकाश चंद्र सर फिजियोथेरापी कंसल्टेंट सीबीआईसी इसी के साथ मैं अपनी आई टीम का भी धन्यवाद करना चाहूंगी उनके सहयोग के बिना हम इस कार्यक्रम को यहाँ तक नहीं ला पाते इसी के साथ मैं धन्यवाद करना चाहूंगी कि जितने भी हमारे सीनियर्स और हमारे जूनियर्स साथ में कलीग्स जिन्होंने इस कार्यक्रम में भाग लेके इस कार्यक्रम को एक समापन की ओर लेके गए हैं और उन सभी पेरेंट्स का जिन्होंने अपने वेल्यूबल क्वेश्चन पूछ के हम सबकी नॉलेज में एक इंक्रीमेंट लाए हैं क्योंकि बहुत बार ऐसा होता है कि हम सबके क्वेश्चन होते हैं पर हम उन्हें वर्ड्स में नहीं ला पाते इसी के साथ कार्यक्रम को समापन की ओर ले जाते हुए मैं आप सबका थैंक यू कहना चाहूंगी और आप सब अपना ईमेल एड्रेस हमारे चैट बॉक्स पे डाल सकते हैं जिस जिसके थ्रू आपको आपके जो सर्टिफिकेट है वो हम इजीली डिस्ट्रीब्यूट करवा सकते हैं आपको फीडबैक फॉर्म मिल गया है वहां पे आप अपनी डिटेल्स फिल कर सकते हैं और अगर किसी भी पेरेंट के या किसी प्रोफेशनल के कोई क्वेश्चन रह गए हैं तो आप हमें मेल पे सेंड कर सकते हैं सो so देट हम उनके रिप्लाई आपको बाय द मेल सेंड कर थैंक यू एवरी